Hey, what's up, Chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the E-Ride Pro SS 2.0. More specifically, some of the mods I've done it since I bought this bike in uh, late April or early May. Man, I absolutely love this bike, and I wanted to do some stuff mainly to make this bike stick out a little bit. So that's part of the fun of modifying these bikes is putting your mark on it and making it your own. You know, actually, I wanted to address something else and unre completely unrelated. You know, I got this weird comment in one of my last videos that said, hey, bend the bill on that hat. It looks ridiculous. So, okay, I guess I'll bend it. I don't know. Does that look any better? Anyways, guys, that's enough small talk. What do you say we get right into it? All right, here we are up close and personal with the E-Ride Pro SS. Now, as you can see, the bike looks kind of drastically different because I put a wrap on this bike from ECD Wraps. I'm actually really impressed with the quality of this wrap. I put it on. I didn't read the instructions. I didn't do anything. I got the package. I opened it and I put it directly on the bike. It's a really thick vinyl. It went on super easy. No problems at all. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the look of the blue wrap. But then, you know, I noticed, hey, I have my all stock E-Ride Pro SS with just a blue wrap. So I had to start complementing the blue wrap with different parts. So that's when I ordered this Guts seat cover here. Now I actually ordered this directly from Guts. Unfortunately, as of now, there's no seat aftermarket seats available for the E-Ride Pro. So I had to get the seat cover. But if you go on Guts site, you can actually individualize every part of this seat cover and have them make it to your order and then ship it to you. And that's what I did. So you can change the color of the side, the top, and the lines here, and whether or not it has the Guts logo on it. The installation on this was actually not too hard. You do have to tear off the old cover and then staple the new one on. All the directions I saw online, everyone said, use a pneumatic stapler, pneumatic stapler. Guys, I didn't use a pneumatic stapler. Granted, the staples probably didn't stick quite as well as they should have or would have with a pneumatic stapler. But uh, I've had this on there for a few weeks now and I've had no problems at all. So it's actually a very easy install. So if you're on the fence about one of these, uh, it's pretty easy. I'd use a quarter inch staple, but don't use a staple that's longer than a quarter inch. So I really like the way this seat looks. And for reference, and this is the aggressive material I chose. But guys, I didn't stop there because I'm completely out of my mind, right? The next mod I did was adding this direct mount direct mount stem from warp nine now you can pick whatever colors you want with this and it gives you the optional riser as well and i wanted this for a couple reasons one because yes it's blue and it matches the rest of it but this also raises your handlebars an inch up and this is a much sturdier mount system than the stock mount which uses a more traditional mountain bike style mount but yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but when you ride the bike with this, you feel, it just feels more sturdy. But there is a downside to this. Unfortunately, when you install this direct mount stem, you have to cut one side of your display mount in order for it to fit in the middle. As you can see, the spacing on the direct mount stem here is the exact same as the spacing on your display. So unfortunately, you do just have to cut one side of it off, but as you can see here, it works fine. I believe eBikezilla makes a mount for this bike that you do not have to do this, but uh, unfortunately, I was unable to find that. It was, it was out, of, out of stock everywhere, and I am extremely impatient. But anyways, I'm really happy with the way this looks. You can just tell, you can tell this Warp 9 direct mount stem is very high quality. And I also got this Warp 9 stem lock. You actually, don't need it for the E-Ride Pro. My friend has a Talaria and he got one and the way the Talaria works is it has a little jam nut in there and you have to take that out and then install this one. But the stock E-Ride Pro uses a through mount system. So you can actually use the mount from you. You can use the stem lock from your E-Ride Pro stock, but it's not gonna be color coded to your options guys. And that's what really matters, right? Moving right along here, I got these nice blue ODI grips. I picked these up on Amazon. I believe these are about 20 bucks. Uh, nothing to write home about. They're standard motorcycle grips, but they're blue, they're color coded, and uh, yeah, they work fine. Up here in the front, I had my merch person make me a matching blue Shoot the Chit logo. I had a yellow and red one initially on this bike, but that totally just didn't fit the motif of this bike at all. So I did have a new one made and uh, might I say, it came out pretty good and it matches the bike much better. Oh yeah guys, and check this out. 
a mod the bike did for itself is this cool one here. As you see here, the bike is now lighter than it was stock because the latch here decided to come off. So this lid no longer latches. As you can see here, this little latch attaches here and it goes down and locks it into place. So I mentioned in my review, as you pull the battery out, it naturally will hit this and this gets bent back and forth and you're gonna have to bend it to make it fit. So unfortunately this broke, but I did order a new one uh, from E-Ride's website. They're only like a $2 for this part. I ordered that about a week and a half ago and I have, have absolutely no confirmation of shipping or anything. So as of now, I kind of just ride it around like this and uh, really the way I ride, it actually doesn't really matter if this latches down, but I feel a lot better once I get a new one of these in stock. But well, yeah, isn't that a cool mod guys? Some of you guys might already notice, but arguably the biggest mod I've done to the bike so far is I swapped out the tires. These are Shinko 244 tires. And one of the reasons I really like this tire is this, let's be honest, most of us are probably gonna be riding these bikes mostly on asphalt. These tires are much better for asphalt. These, bike, these tires feel much smoother. And if you look here, look at the side profile of this tire. It's a much rounded, it's a much more rounded profile. So that means it translates when you're leaning, the bike will lean much smoother. For reference, here's the stock tire. Now these stock tires actually, they're not too bad, but you can see I have about 500 miles on the bike now. I probably had about 400 and something when I took these off. Look at how much this tire is already worn down. And when you look at the side profile of this tire, you can see there's a missing gap of tread on the sides here. So when you lean this stock tire, it's not gonna be work as well. But I have noticed this stock tire is better in loose dirt and in definitely in gravel. The new tire is much better all around, but I do notice in gravel, it slides a little bit. It's more prone to sliding. And first thing I noticed when I got this on the bike is this tire is significantly heavier than the stock tire. I believe this tire is about two pounds heavier. This is 2.75 by 19 front and rear. So the front tire is wider than the stock tire. I really wish they made the same exact tire with the same profile, but a lighter version. I try and keep the weight down as much as possible on these bikes, especially on the rotating mass. So yeah, overall, I still very highly recommend this tire, especially if you're gonna be riding on the street. But unfortunately it is heavier. And guys, changing a tire on a dirt bike is a pain in the ass. This was not fun. As a matter of fact, the first tire, first time I changed this rear tire, I punctured the tube. And as you can see here, I put some marks on the wheel. I punctured the tube. I had to order a new tube because of course I didn't have an extra with me, but there was a happy side effect from this. And that is the new tube just happened to come with blue valve stems. So I now have blue valve stems on my tires because I ordered two new tubes. Maybe it was just kind of meant to be. Final mod I've done to this bike so far is these warp nine pedals here. Check these out. These mount directly to your stock mount. When I was first looking at these, I was like, you know, I come from a mountain bike background and looking at these pedals, I was like, man, are these pegs? I was just thinking the sheer havoc this would put on your shin if you slipped off the pedal. But guys, this is a dirt bike and uh, your feet are probably not gonna be slipping off and your shins most likely not gonna be hitting these. But these are really high quality, nice looking units. These are about a hundred bucks. I think this bike is just really nice looking. And by the way, this bike is not in my living room just for the video. My bike is always parked in my living room. Oh yeah, guys, since we're talking about pegs, I actually have a pretty cool announcement to make. If you purchase this bike through RevRide using the link in the description of this video, you can get a set of Warp 9 pegs for free with your order if you use coupon code SHOOTTHECHIT. So all you do is you put the bike in the, your cart, you add the Warp 9 pegs to your cart, use coupon code SHOOTTHECHIT, and you'll get the pegs for absolutely free, guys. How's that for a special offer? Now, when people see this bike, they're gonna say, hey, there goes shoot the chit. Uh, unfortunately, that means now when police see the bike, they're gonna be like, hey, there goes shoot the chit. But you know what, guys? I didn't put all this stuff on the bike to sit in my living room and then talk about it, right? No, I put all this stuff on the bike so I could go out and ride it and people could look at me and with envy. And that's what we should go do now, right? Come on, guys, let's get going. Oh.
As you can tell, most of the mods I did don't really affect the performance, other than the tires, which uh, these are so much smoother and lean way better on asphalt. So I feel like if you're doing your primarily gonna be riding around on asphalt, look into getting these Shinko 244 or 241s even if you do even less off-road riding. But yeah, these are much smoother. Unfortunately, they are heavier like I mentioned. And another thing I wanna point out is with the direct mount uh, handlebars here, uh, I have the riser on there, so it's about an inch higher than it was stock. And uh, guys, I come from a mountain bike background, you know, bikes. I find myself sitting on this bike too much, and I think part of the reason is it feels awkward when I stand up. Like, this bike is too small for me when I stand up. So, having the, the bars up a little higher has kind of helped me enable me to remember to get up and it feels more ergonomic for me to get up and let the bike suspension and everything absorb the bumps instead of sitting on the bike and then just plowing through bumps maybe you guys can't relate to that one but me coming from a bicycle background it's been a kind of a weird transition so i just took this bike camping and man having this bike on a camping trip was absolutely awesome guys go to zip down to the camp store and go all over the place i've explored parts of the campground that i go to every year that i've never seen before it's just great i was going all over the place on this bike i brought a solar generator with me to charge it i could charge this thing like 20 to 30 or maybe 40 percent but uh it really couldn't keep up with this charger because the charger on this bike pulls about 900 watts so if you really wanted to charge this bike from solar, you need to have quite a bit of solar panels where I only have about 300 watts worth of panels. So I was able to keep it charged. I never ran out of charge, but I wasn't riding a huge amount every single day. But uh, it worked for me. I was able to keep this pretty much topped off and my e-bike topped off as well as uh, power all my appliances. So, you know, maybe that's a topic for another video, but it is pretty nice to be able to charge your uh, e-bikes on the go when i bought this bike i didn't know how much i would end up riding it because uh i'm not a willy guy these bikes are plenty fun without having to do any of all that stuff at all and luckily for me in this area uh, the police aren't really too concerned if i ride it around so i can commute on the bike i can do pretty much everything i want it's pretty cool too so with this awesome little battery mod here you know i can just open and shut this thing whenever i want I don't have to pull out the key anymore. I can just ride around and open and shut the battery door. How cool is that? You know, honestly, it's really not too big of an issue, but uh, I wouldn't want to be doing wheelies or taking jumps or doing anything like that with this thing just loose. But the massive amount of weight of the battery just keeps it in there, planted in there pretty well. So as far as these uh, Warp 9 pegs go, um, honestly, I've heard some people complain about the stock pegs. I think the stock plagues are completely fine. Um, the, people have said that, yeah, they're made for sneakers. I think a lot of the complaints come from Surons. The pegs on Surons are thinner than the ones on the E-Ride, which is another reason. E-Ride seems like they've ironed out most of the issues and things that people upgrade on these bikes. They just do it right from the factory. So yeah, don't go into buying this bike thinking you're gonna have to start buying a bunch of mods. These things are just fine right off the showroom floor. But it is fun to do mods, and let's face it, you know, a lot of people, a lot of us are gonna do mods whether you need to or not. That being said, then now there's the EBMX 9000 controller you can get for this bike, which, uh, you know, from what I've seen, it doesn't sound like it uh, makes the top speed any higher. So I'm guessing this bike is limited somehow at 60 miles an hour, because the Talaria boys put a smaller sprocket on the rear and still topped out at 60, which makes no sense. So yeah, you can get more power, but honestly, the riding this bike, I don't really feel like I need any more low-end power. You can loop this bike extremely easy as it is. So I don't know, of course, people are better riders than me and want more power, but as of now, I don't really want, I don't really need uh, more power. And you don't get to use your stock display on the EBMX 9000. And uh, I kind of like this stock display. Yeah, I know. So 
some people can just never be happy, right? This is one of those times I do notice these Shinko 244s. There's some like looser dirt on some of these corners and a little bit of gravel. And I do notice uh, they feel a little more squirrely than the stock tires do. But for what, how I ride, the Shinko 244s just seem so much better all around. But like I mentioned, I do wish they made a lighter weight version of the 244 so you could, uh, you know, not lose any power. One of the things I was on the fence with for a while is the fenders. I took off the fenders on this and at first, I don't know, I like the rear fender, especially the front. I was indifferent about the front, but I like the rear. I ended up just taking them off and I have to say, I do like this. My friend said that, oh yeah, I think it makes them look more like bikes. So it's gonna be less conspicuous. It's like, I don't think that's true at all. This bike is still, nobody's gonna be confusing this for a mountain bike if they see you riding their own. But all in all, I like it guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, for what, 200, 300 bucks, I completely changed the way this bike looks. And now, you know, this is my bike. I don't know, I just really like it. This is fun. It's like every kid's childhood dream to get a uh, dirt bike. And now I have a dirt bike. So cool, guys. At some point, I probably will have to address the uh, belt pulley as the stock one seems to fail. Oh, and I did notice uh, my shock appears to be leaking and it sounds like it's an extremely common issue on these bikes is the shock. The shocks leak and uh, I mean well that's fairly normal for that to be wet. It did seem a bit excessive for me. You can see kind of the oils pulling up there. The shock still works fine. Sorry the fork still works fine. But uh, it's kind of on my radar now. I'm not really trying to spend $2,000 on an upgraded fork. The Fast Ace Force, I think is like 900 bucks or something, but that's an expensive one. I'm sure the warranty will cover it, but all in all, I'm not really uh, looking to do that. Bike feels so much more at home on the road with these tires. But if you're gonna keep riding your bike off-road, the, the stock tires are fine. They're just wear out much faster and uh, when you come to a stop on the road, you would notice, I would notice the rear tire locking up significantly easier than it does now. So these tires have quite a bit more grip on the asphalt. And let's face it guys, most of us are riding on the asphalt. And they feel so much, so much stabler due to that rounded profile, it's really nice. All right guys, there you have it. I just wanted to show off my new mods and let you guys know if you are interested in buying uh, E-Ride Pro SS through Rev Rides, you can use the link in the description of this video, enter coupon code SHOOT TO CHIT and you can get your very own Warp 9 pegs for absolutely free, guys. Just tell them SHOOT TO CHIT sent you. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>